Hello, this is Julia Bushkova, and today I'm going to speak on the subject of the shoulder rest, or rather, should I or shouldn't I use the shoulder rest while playing the violin? The parallel that comes to mind is about cars. Should I drive an automatic transmission or should I drive a manual transmission? Well, I don't think we actually ask this question this way nowadays. We prefer one or the other. So I believe this is how it should be presented and thought of with the shoulder rest as well. After you have played violin for a while, weighed all the pros and cons of each method, and then decide for yourself. There was a time when there was no choice about cars. There were only stick shift cars around. Similarly, there was a time when there was no question whether to use or not to use the shoulder rest or even the chin rest, because neither had been invented yet. Uh, the chin rest was invented first by Louis Spohr. Why? Let's not forget that every uh, gadget or innovation that is on violin these days was created only for one reason, because violin playing was becoming more and more virtuosic. With the demand came the supply, and not the other way around. So these days, very few people doubt the usability of the chin rest. The shoulder rest came about a bit later, in the beginning of the 20th century. But before that, many violinists were using some form of shoulder help. Uh, some handkerchiefs that were placed uh, right there under the violin, uh, especially the little pads that were created for the beginners. Uh, it's very hard to begin playing violin without any support, as we all know. And uh, from that, it developed into actual shoulder rest, as we pretty much know it these days. And now I will go into more technical matters about uh, playing without or with the shoulder rest. So first of all, the pros of playing without the shoulder rest. Well, number one, I think, for everybody will be history. More people, more players in the history of violin played without shoulder rest, and all the greats played without shoulder rest too, or so we think. Uh, number two, shoulder rest does offer some constriction of the lower uh, portion of the violin, and without shoulder rest you don't have any constriction. So the sound is fuller, maybe a little bit louder, and so on. Number three, a uh, practical thing. You don't have to forget anything. What if you are playing with something and you forgot it at home? Don't have to carry anything else in your violin case. Convenience. And number four, ideally you are expected to have more shoulder mobility when you are playing without the shoulder rest. Now we would look at some cons that appear without uh, the shoulder rest as well. The major cons, as oftentimes it is the case, the ideal is not usually the everyday practice. So in fact, in the history of playing the violin, most players used their own shoulder to secure the violin on the collarbone. In other words, they were playing like this. What happens when you raise the shoulder and uh, keep it there in this position for a long time, uh, for most people, they start having pain. Not right away, not when they're young, but at some point they will. And the pain is likely to become chronic and uh, much debilitating, actually. And as you can see, so many muscles right now are extremely stretched and they also tense, and they are staying in this position without any relief. Also, this uh, tension leads to constriction of the movement of your arm, your forearm and your upper arm. So this is all about pros and cons of playing without shoulder rest, and now with a shoulder rest. Uh, playing without, with a shoulder rest first alleviates the necessity to secure the violin with your shoulder, a uh, violin literally rests on the shoulder rest, and that is resting on your shoulder. This makes playing much more comfortable, 
and the left arm is very free to move around the fingerboard. It's that for that reason, the shoulder rest became incredibly popular the moment, the moment they were invented. Uh, it is very important to mention that when uh, smaller hand people playing in upper positions, they have to come over here. If you don't use a shoulder rest, then you definitely need to clamp on the way down. And again, that may lead to re uh, re retaining that clamp when you're already in the first position and on and on. And now about the cons of playing with the shoulder rest. Number one, it is an additional thing that is placed on the violin in pretty much this manner. And that way it constricts the vibration of the lower part of the violin body. Uh, it does lead to a loss of volume to, in my opinion, a very minimal percentage. But again, some people prefer not to lose this volume at all. Number two, if the shoulder rest is not fitted properly, and if it's not fitted properly with your chin rest, you may also get hurt. So what is the right way to play without and or with the shoulder rest? The problem that both sides experience most often is that people get tense in the shoulder region. So if your goal is to play without a shoulder rest, you need to make sure that you develop proper coordination between your shoulder, your upper arm, your forearm, and your wrist. In other words, you will spend more time on that uh, aspect alone. Number two, you need to make sure you have a, a lot of strength or enough strength in your hand to support the weight of the violin, which will be resting partially in your hand as well as on your collarbone, uh, while moving very fast and changing positions. So you will also need to develop a special technique for shifting. You can shift by using momentarily lifting your shoulder and then releasing it and shifting also without um, raising your shoulder, but using the uh, technique in your hand. Number three, you need to make sure that you either have excellent stretchability, or maybe you have a very big hand with the long fourth finger, because playing without shoulder rest requires not leaving the neck with your thumb. So right now, I will demonstrate to you how to play uh, a certain passage without using the shoulder rest. Since I have no padding here whatsoever, I have to use a little cloth so that the side of the violin doesn't hurt my bone. So here it will be. So for those of you who want to try uh, or perfect your technique of uh, playing without a shoulder rest, I recommend the videos by Yegudi Menuhin and also by my nephew, Mark Bushkov, a brilliant young violinist, a winner of Montreal competition and many others, who currently plays without a shoulder rest and has a really nice video uh, about uh, that technique. First, again, I would like to step a little bit away and remind everybody that when we are talking about shoulder rest, we may be talking about actual rest, something that looks like this, or we can be talking about some sort of shoulder pad, which there are very many varieties right now as well. 
and different people have different relationship with one or the other, but let's call it a shoulder help. And now about playing properly with the shoulder rest. Number one, yes, it has to be fitted to you and it has to be fitted well with your type of chin rest. The shoulder rest has to be properly fitted to your body. Uh, if you have a longer neck, if you have sloped shoulders, and many other anatomical differences we all have, um, you might need to use a certain type of shoulder rest. And no, I cannot tell you which one is better for which type, because it's so completely individual. Uh, not only the shoulder rest has to be uh, chosen according to what feels good uh, and feels secure on your body, but also the chin rest needs to match with your shoulder rest. And that is something that many people don't know at all about. Number two, when the shoulder rest is not comfortable, we do basically the same thing. Now this one is actually comfortable, but I will demonstrate as if it isn't. So this. And then we're dealing basically with the same issue as the people who played without shoulder rest uh, improperly. Uh, we call this static contraction. When nothing moves, it is static contraction. It's the worst possible form of tension for any player. And now I will demonstrate the same excerpt um, with the shoulder rest. In conclusion, I would like to name some fantastic violinists on both sides. Those who played without, with the shoulder rest, and those who are playing with. Let's start with those without. Of course, Elman, Milstein, Heifetz, Isai, uh, Perlman, Zuckerman, Ansofi Mutter. Yes, all of them played without. David Oistrich? Oh, wait, no. He used a little pad. Not many people know about it because he certainly appears without any shoulder rest. Do you, where do we count him? He had the utmost freedom of everything. Then we have also, for instance, Heifetz's students. Heifetz, who played very freely without shoulder rest, wanted his student, uh, all of his students, to play without as well. The best students of Heifetz, Eric Friedman. Eric Friedman played without a shoulder rest. He had a very long neck. He was very tall. And if you watch him in a Heifetz master classes, where there was, is a view from the back, you will see that he plays in the manner I described early on. Much raising and holding his shoulder. Probably didn't hurt him. He had a good career and played very well. Now let's look at the people who are using the shoulder rests. No, they won't be as old violinists, of course. They're all younger, but does it make them less phenomenal? I don't think so. Leonidas Kavakos, Frank Peter Zimmerman, Victoria Mulova, Hilary Hahn, Gil Shaham. Those are phenomenal violinists and many more, of course but those are also no less phenomenal violinists technically and musically than those who I named before. Now, about those who play without a shoulder rest, look at the structure of their bodies. You will feel, see that the structure is somewhat similar. All of the violinists not using shoulder rest at all and not raising their shoulder do not have long necks or even longer necks. Almost all of them have what we call a natural padding here. It's extremely helpful and really necessary. And many of them, men, not on Sophie Mutter who plays in the gowns, uh, but men use 
a little bit of padding that they insert underneath their performing jackets. One of them, Isaac Stern, not only it put some padding underneath his uh, tuxedo or tails jacket, but also considerably raised his shoulder while playing. Again, you can easily see it on uh, videos. Did it hurt him? I don't think so. Was he lucky that way? Definitely so. And he was a weightlifter, so his muscles were extremely strong. Again, this is something that anyone who wants to play without shoulder rest must consider. Their overall musculature has to be really strong. So this is pretty much all I can say on the matter of with or without. Please make your choice. Please don't go and shame those who play with the shoulder rests. No, no one deserves any shame. Every possible way of playing the violin, this very difficult instrument, is a great way to play. As long as you make music, as long as you carry it to us, the listeners, you're in a good place.